Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Solar Impulse 2 lands in Egypt. Flying into the Olympic Games airspace may get you shot down. Blue Angels fill the ranks again. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom, it's July 15th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Solar Impulse 2 has one more leg to fly to complete its journey around the world. As the journey comes closer to its end, the Solar Impulse 2 landed in Egypt after a flight of two days and two nights without fossil fuel. This flight, which was powered by the sun, crossed a Mediterranean sea from west to east and covered distance of 2,022 nautical miles. It was the second to last leg of the attempt to achieve the first ever round the world solar flight. Andre Borsberg touched down at the Cairo International Airport after an iconic moment flying over the pyramids at Giza. During the flight, the aircraft reached a maximum altitude of 28,000 feet and attained an average speed of 41 knots. The flight to Cairo started from Seville, Spain. This flight was the last flight for Borschberg as it relates to this adventure. Bertrand Picard will take the controls for the last leg to Abu Dhabi, where it all started in March 2015. The stated goal of the flight has been to demonstrate how modern, clean technologies can achieve the impossible. It now appears a new competition may have been added to the Summer Olympic Games to be held in Rio de Janeiro. This new event is called Shoot Down the Intruder. The Brazilian Defense Minister Raul Hungman said during a news conference outlining the country's security plan for the Games that any unidentified aircraft that violates protected airspace around the Olympic venues in Rio de Janeiro will be shot down. According to Latino Fox News, Hungman said, We are not playing. We're not sure exactly how temporary flight restrictions are published in Brazil, but it would be wise for pilots to check before flying. It has also been announced how many shoot-downs are required to be awarded for the gold medal. After the break, a previous Blue Angel pilot returns. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, has announced their selection of a prior Blue Angels pilot to serve as their new Blue Angel No. 6 opposing solo pilot. He takes the position of Marine Captain Jeff Coos, who died in a crash while practicing for an air show in Smyrna, Tennessee in June. The team will welcome back Navy Commander Frank Weiser for the remainder of the 2016 and 2017 season. Weiser previously served on the Blue Angels from 2008 to 2010 and performed duties as the narrator, key influencer, and VIP pilot, opposing solo, and lead solo. The commander received his wings of gold in November 2002 and has accumulated more than 4,000 flight hours and 400 carrier arrested landings. We at ANN congratulate Commander Weiser for being selected to fill the number six slot in the prestigious Blue Angels team. It's Friday, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. EAA AirVenture is the place where the light shines bright on the various aspects of aviation. In this week's commentary, Jim says we need to be there and we need to be counted. Our future could depend on it. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. And by the time you see this, I'm on my way to Oshkosh. 
I leave quite a bit early because there's a lot of setup to do, and we have a permanent building that we left at Oshkosh quite a few years ago. There's a little bit of maintenance that has to be done each year, see if the hornet's nest on the bottom is uh, out this year and destroy that, and check the air conditioning and check uh, you know ceilings and windows and the whole nine yards, sweep it out, and have it ready for business by the time Monday rolls around a week ahead of Oshkosh so that we can start preparing for the greatest show on over Earth. I gotta tell you, it's been a tough couple of weeks around the world. Um, you don't have to spend too much time in front of the tube to realize that the world is just not as friendly a place as we'd like it to be. And frankly, here at ANN, we've had a couple of tough things we've had to deal with. A story we did earlier this week that, frankly, was gut wrenching. And it wasn't the best side of aviation, but at least the truth was told. And the aviation world shows that no matter what, right, wrong, or indifferent, the truth will out and that this industry has the guts to see it through. But let's put all that aside for a little bit. And let's look forward to next week and Oshkosh. And let's just do one thing. Let's celebrate aviation. Let's be who we are, a huge aviation community, an Aeroverse, if you will. Uh, last year, with the phenomenal numbers that EA boasted for Oshkosh, quite justifiably, it was a signal to the rest of the world that aviation is still fighting, still unified, still working together, and still really interested in building a future. And I want this Oshkosh to be that. Uh, please reach out to us. Please stop by. If you see me running around, don't be afraid to stop me because I'd love to talk to you. I learn more from you, the reader, than any other education I might get with any other person. We have an interview with Jack Pelton just before the fly-in that will be presented in five parts during the week uh, of the event each day during our airborne programming. And if you've got questions for Jack, now's the time to get them in there. I guarantee you he's got answers for you because so far I've thrown everything at him and he's thrown them right back. But all in all, let's make this Oshkosh exceptional. We need a win right now. We need something positive. There's some good things on the horizon after having battled some pretty extraordinarily bad stuff. Uh, we might get our third class medical reform. We might get the FA uh, reauthorization finally through. We might get this. We might get that. But let's just band together. Have a great time. Have a great air show. Go see the newest and bestest and brightest and fastest and coolest. And let's come together and have an amazing air venture. We need it. But we also need to show the world who we are and where better than Whitman Field, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. For the Aero News Network, Airborne, and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. I'll see you at Whitman Field. After these messages, Embraer projects the market for the next 20 years. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The aviation industry is full of news, and we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Embraer has released its 2016 through 2035 market outlook. The company projects demand for 6,400 new jets in the 70 to 130 plus seat capacity category. This market segment is projected to be worth $300 billion over the next 20 years. Robinson Helicopter Company has announced the Garmin G500H avionics display system is now an option on the new R44 Raven 2 and Cadet helicopters. 
The G500H is a combination primary flight display and multifunction display which provides flight instrumentation navigation and situational awareness. The FAA has published a supplemental notice to propose rulemaking for safety management systems in the airport area. The safety management system is a formal approach to managing safety through policy, safety risk management, safety assurance, and safety promotion. GE Aviation has finalized agreements with IHI Corporation, Safran Aircraft Engines, and Safran Aero Boosters as participants in the GE9X Engine Program. GE9X Engine Program participants produce a combined total of about 25% of the components for the GE9X Engine. A team of astronomers have used the SPEAR instrument on the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope to image the first planet ever found in a wide orbit outside a triple star system. This means the planet has three suns, the perfect place to get a great tan. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. Modern air shows are full of incredible aircraft doing impossible maneuvers that can only be described as death defying. It wasn't always like that though. Early acro flying, particularly during the golden age of aviation, seemed to have a personal touch to it. Their acrobatic maneuvers could better be described as beautiful and serene. A group of pilots in Denmark seem to feel the same way and their website explains what they're doing about it. Here's a take on vintage aerobatics. Flying straight and level is wonderful in our old aeroplanes, but sometimes you have this urge to fly inverted. Why not make an organized event out of it and enjoy the wonderful company of your fellow vintage pilots? The aeroplanes are vintage too. Therefore, we have decided to stage the first Vintage Aerobatic World Championship. The event to be held at Stauning Airport in Denmark will include three categories of competition that are designed to match the skills of the aviator. It's a true sporting event and winners of the competition will be awarded one of four large bottles of champagne. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you Monday.